Good morning English language learners. I am Arham and today we'll be looking at a new video vocabulary lesson series all rotating around the word cry. Now at the beginning of today's lesson I want to just differentiate that there are mainly two meanings of the word cry. The first type of cry you may be very familiar with. It just means you know when you are overwhelmed with an emotion, usually sadness, but sometimes even happiness or joy, you end up or your body ends up showing a physical reaction and usually tears come out and that is what you would uh, call crying, right? That I am crying. Another meaning of cry is basically a loud sound or a loud shout. So don't cry out so loud the the lion might wake up that's one example of a sentence that uses the the second meaning of cry today what we'll be looking at is that first meaning of cry and the second meaning of cry as well all of these words are in your worksheet and it's a good idea that you have your worksheet with you you download it you print it so that it's ready and in front of you and you can follow along all right so the first word is sob when you sob, you basically are crying uh, usually more passionately because you're feeling more hurt and uh, you know, it's a long sort of crying, it's more intense. So instead of saying the word cry, you can always say that this person was sobbing, sobbing their heart out. Okay, similar to the word sob is the word weep. Again, this may be a word that you're familiar with. So instead of saying the word cry, we could use the word weep and uh, very, very similar. Now, one thing I want to just identify that when you talk about the word uh, sob or weep and even certain other words, for example, you have the word sniffle, snivel, whine, whimper. Again, snivel, sniffle, whine, whimper. All of these types of crying or all of these crying words are basically more soft crying okay so it's not uh, very loud and noisy however if you look at the word ball when you ball your eyes out that is a good word because it is kind of showing the exact opposite nature of or exact opposite characteristic of crying as we have seen in these other words it is loud it is very very loud so try and find out or try and think about when someone might be sobbing as opposed to when that same person might be bawling, you know, and uh, note the spelling of the word bawling. It's not the same word B-A-L-L, -L, it is B-A-W-L, right? Okay, also the word wail, wail, wailing is loud, shrieking sort of cry of pain and cry of uh, sadness, anguish. So wailing again loud. The last word that we'll be looking at for this section is the word squall. Now the word squall has another meaning also and I would love if you found out the other meaning of the word squall. But for right now, the word squall means loud and continuous crying. So maybe, you know, babies might squall because they just go on and on and on and maybe 30 minutes they don't stop. They're just crying half hour straight. They're crying, crying, crying. So that's what the word squall is all about. Like I had mentioned, the words which are softer or soft versions of cry, we have very, very feeble versions or very, very weak versions of cry, which are sniffle. So sniffle is something like it's kind of the uh, the end of your crying session. So just when you're almost wrapped up, maybe a tear or two coming out and you're just, you know, going like that uh, with your nose, making these soft whimpering noises. That is what sniffle or even snivel means. They're almost the same, right? Sniffle, snivel, whimper. Um, whimper could also uh, be related to animals. Animals usually whimper in pain. So you may have heard uh, a dog when he's uh, a small puppy, when he's scared, uh, you know, maybe in the dark or you've left him all alone, your puppy, he would whimper like very small and um, scared sounds of anguish again. All right. So as I had mentioned earlier, there is an alternative nature to the word cry, which just means a loud sound. 
So what are some synonyms of this alternative meaning of cry? Let's have a look. We have some very simple ones. Shout, shriek. Shriek is usually high pitch. So not uh, low pitch. So not a sound deep like this. Uh, but rather, ah! So shrieking. Now again, you want to think, when would a person or what type of person or what type of animal may shriek as opposed to shout or as opposed to yell? Yell again, maybe uh, is something when, is the type of uh, screaming you do when you're angry. Shouting perhaps could be even if you're just very further away from someone, you end up shouting so that they can hear you. But yell usually um, shows that, you know, maybe there is a lot of uh, emotion and anger that the other person is trying to communicate to you. Other synonyms for the word cry could be bellow. Now bellow, roar, these are all uh, words that can be associated with animals also because as you know the lion roars and uh, you know bulls may bellow or other animals also make certain sounds like these. So again, these are just synonyms for the word cry. We have a few of our last words. Screech, shriek, squeal, yowl. I like the word yowl because it's very onomatopic. What do we mean by onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia just means that the word itself sounds like the sound that it is trying to uh, define. So if we talk about the word yowl, even a yowl sounds like a yowl, yowl. And think about when or what animal might be making a yowling sound. When might you make a yowling sound? So usually it's a high pitch, loud and a continuous um, a sound of pain, sound of anger. So yowl again. All right, English language learners. So that was the end of today's uh, first part of the cry vocabulary video lesson series and I hope you enjoyed it I will recommend that you look through your worksheet it has quite an assortment of exercises and I'm going to look forward to you using these words and telling me about when you use them how you use them what effect they created and so on so I'll see you in the next one bye bye